In this episode, we are going to go over how to resize an image on the client side so that we can send optimized file sizes to the server when we have to upload an image. Often, when we take a picture or a selfie on our phones, we'll have a few megabytes in size and we might need to only upload it for a 200 square pixel profile picture and that could be kilobytes. So by using this, we can create faster upload speeds and be mindful of people with poor connections. This is the second episode in a series on which I go over tips and tricks to build a better performing web app for people with poor internet connections. So let's jump into this episode. Okay, and welcome back. So we have a little bit of boilerplate here set up just so we can focus on only the JavaScript. And what we're going to do here is just have a look and make sure you have an input here that has the accepted file types. And we are going to use this with the ID of upload to target this as well. We're just, we added a button here as well to process this or do the resizing. So I've just called this function process for now. And I've added two empty image tags for now, just so I could show you a preview when we're going along of the before and after resized images. And obviously we need to have, make sure we have the app.js linked up. If we look in the styles, there's very little. And in the app.js right now, I just have a console log to say I'm connected. So let's jump over to the preview just so you can see what it looks like. And as you can see, super basic here. And if I hit the process, yeah, we get that I'm connected. So everything is working. And the first thing we're going to do is grab the file from our input. So let's create a const called file. And that is going to be equal to the document dot query selector. And we have the ID of, oh, it's in a string. We have the ID of input that we can target. And that gives us back dot files, which is an array. So we are going to just get one image. So we'll take the first element that is in that array. And just as a sanity check, or just to make sure we're not processing when there is no file, a little quick check I'm going to add in here is if there is no file, then we are just going to return straight away so that we automatically return out of this function and don't continue. Now, the next thing we're going to do is create a file reader. That's just so we can asynchronously read the contents of a file. So we'll call a new const reader, and that is going to be equal to a new file reader. And with this reader, we have a property on there called read or a method that we call read as data URL. And we can pass in the file and we will get back a base 64 encoded data URI, which we can use then to pass in to, or pass through or preview our image and everything else once we have that there. When this reader is finished reading this file, it'll trigger a dot onload event that is on the, on the reader. And what we're going to do is set that to be equal to the function that will actually resize our image. So to do that, we are going to just say reader dot onload. And that is going to be equal to a function. And that has an event that goes into it. And we will define the rest of our stuff in here. To resize this using the canvas element, what we're going to need is an image element to put into the canvas. So the first thing we're going to do is create an image element. Oh, and I am terrible at spelling clearly element. 
and that is equal to document dot create element image and that will give us a new image element the next thing we're going to do is set the image element to that uri or the source of it so we'll say image element dot source is equal to the event dot target dot result and that's our base 64 encoded data uri so we can actually preview the image straight away now once that reader has loaded it and let's say document dot query selector and now i'm after noticing something that i'm after doing silly here because it's actually the id input that i am using as a preview element for me so i have to change my typo up above in a second so source is going to be equal to the event dot target dot result and this is just to show you that we can see it so if we just jump back up to the top here of where i'm grabbing the file i'm not going to grab the file from here it was actually called in here i have an id of upload that i forgot about so i'm just going to change this to upload and now everything shouldn't blow up but let's just make sure this is working and that we can uh, grab everything oh and i spelled con strong there we go so now let's jump back over and if we choose a file i have a nice kitty here and we process it we get the preview of the full image and as you can see it's massive so i'm going to refresh that and jump back over so now the next thing we're going to do is after that image has been loaded we are going to listen to that image elements on load event kind of like we just did with the reader and then we're going to put it into the canvas resize it and get our new output so to do that we do the exact same as we did before except with the image element so we'll say image element dot on load equals function which is also going to take an event and just so we have reference to, to two different events. I'm going to use a, an E here to make sure that we can reference the two different events here. Let's create our canvas element. So const canvas is going to be equal to document dot create element. And it's going to be a canvas element. We might as well set up our scaling here. So let's set up a max width for this if we what i'll do is i'll just keep some aspect ratio so we're going to imagine that we have a max width that we want so let's create a constant to define the max width so we'll say counts max width and you could make this a variable for the function if you wanted to reuse this that is going to be equal to we'll say 400 to keep the aspect ratio we're going to need a scaling size so I'm going to create a variable called scale size here. So we'll say const scale size is equal to max width divided by the e dot target dot width. And that will just give us a, a ratio that we can multiply our height by in a second to make sure that when we start to shrink this we don't lose the aspect ratio now you can play around with different things here to get more complicated but for this instance it should be good enough so let's set the canvas dot width to be equal to the max width now we're going to set the height and instead of the having a variable here we want to keep the aspect ratio so we're going to get the e dot target dot height and we're going to multiply that by the scale size 
this will enforce the aspect ratio when we go to do this in a second. Next thing I'm going to do is create some canvas context. And I want to create it as a 2D context because we're working with a flat image here. So we'll say const CTX is something you'll see always for, or something that's very common to see anyway, as a reference to the canvas context. So we'll say canvas dot get context. And we'll give that a 2D context. The next part is we're going to draw the image into our canvas and make sure it's equal to the width and height. So we'll say CTX dot draw image. And this takes a, a few parameters here. So we're going to pass it the event dot target, which is the entire image element. I'll console log that out for a second so you can see that. And we are going to position that at the start top left. And to do that, you'll go zero and then zero. And then we give it the X and Y axis. So the width and then height. So we'll say canvas dot width and the canvas dot height. We're only two lines off, finish this completely. So what I'm going to do is I'll console log out that e.target so you can see it in a second, just so you understand what's in there when we have this complete. So we want to get the encoded value here so that we have it compressed and, and we can use it for the preview. So we'll say const source encoded is going to be equal to the context. CTX again, canvas dot to data URL. And we'll pass in our whole element, so e dot target, and we'll tell it what type of image we want. So this by default would default to a PNG, but I want it in a JPEG. So we'll say image dot JPEG. This, I think, takes a optional last parameter. No, does it? Yeah. So I can see it there in the preview. It's the quality is a value between zero and one for the quality of the compression. I tend to leave it out and I think it defaults to something like 0.92. Somebody in the comments, I'm sure, will tell me more about that. But I, I often just leave that out. It seems to do a good job without me touching anything in there. And now let's see a preview of our new image. So we'll say document dot query selector. We'll give this the, and I forgot the string. We'll give this the output. And the source is now going to be equal to that source encoded so that we can preview it. Let's save this. And actually what I'm gonna do while I'm here, just so we can, so you can see this e.target because I reference it a bit, I'm going to just console log it out that e.target so you understand what's in there when we're throwing it around so much. Now let's jump over and see what happens. So let's choose a file. I have my kitty again, we'll open it up hit process. And now you'll see at the bottom in the output tag, we have a drastically smaller version of that. And if we jump over to here, you'll see that we have as the e.target, we get that entire image tag. And that's what we're passing into the canvas to use. Now let's refresh, jump back over to here. You can then send this source encoded straight up to the server or to your to your database or wherever you want or you can play around with it maybe you want to send it as a binary or anything else but for a lot of apps for the smaller apps that i've worked on i've often just used this source encoded you might need to use a multi-step upload if you're using something like aws but at least you know now how to resize the image to get the most optimized version of it up so 
I hope you found this video helpful. And if you did, I would love if you hit that subscribe button. And until next time, happy coding. Thank you.